Everybody, it's Tyler here at Kettering One, checking in with 573 Mech Warrior from Bloomfield Hills. Mech Warriors have been looking great so far. Played a couple matches, and the robot's been operating fantastic. And a lot of great things on the robot will be highlighting, especially take a look at how they're doing their uh, deep climb as well, too. Hooking up underneath is definitely a unique way to go about it. It's been working out great for them so far. We'll be featuring a bit more about this whole package design, what's gone through it, talk a little more about their auto alignment, and really what goes into this awesome machine coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Osh Cut is a premier metal cutting service for first teams. No minimum order, options for same day turnaround, guaranteed lead times, and instant online quotes. Osh Cut is offering first teams 50% off any future order up to $200 when you scan the QR code or go to funroboticsnetwork.com slash OSHCUT. Just upload a 3D model or flat pattern to get started. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options through their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Well, let's start taking a look at the uh, coral journey on this robot here. You guys have been so effective on the field, so walk me through some of the great elements that have gone into this. All right, so over here we have our human player ramp where uh, we intake from the human player station. Uh, typically, we have the human player send it vertically, but if it winds up going horizontal, these can move a little bit and bounce so that the coral ends up vertical into our uh, end effector right here. Uh, we want to design our end effector to completely rotate like this when we uh, want to remove algae from the reef and uh, score it in the processor. Uh, we were working on uh, trying to get it into the barge, but we, uh, our soft stops and our code are preventing us from doing that right now. So we're trying to get that sort of squared away for uh, our next competition. Can you talk a little bit more about this uh, Coral LG dual thing here? How you kind of came up with it and why it's working out so well? Uh, well, we saw another robot do something similar and we liked how it could do both algae and uh, coral at the same time because we were, have, we were having issues with packaging our previous uh, design. So we took, uh, we looked at their CAD model and I created this based off of that. Uh, the main, our main difference from that was we added this whole top section because uh, on the uh, robot's design they didn't have it and it, was, it looked, we were worried about the coral falling out prematurely. So we added this uh, top dead roller which all it does is compress the coral a little bit to prevent it from shooting out completely. And you're running a two-stage elevator on there. Uh, how effective has your L4 scoring been so far? It's been like the easiest scoring method that we've been able to do. It's easy to see, it's easy to score. Really delighted to hear that. Let's pass over to Michael and talk. Uh, we really got to highlight this climb. This is really cool. You know, we talked to so many teams. We, we see just a lot of everybody climbs. Your team has gone a different route. And it's been working out great so far. Tell me more about it. Yeah, so to start off with our climb, we knew that uh, into this game, it would be a lot trickier with a, uh, a swinging cage being completely square and being so heavy. So going into the season, we had to decide, oh, well, we have to be able to climb at least a little bit off the ground to count for uh, 12 points and be able to earn a ranking point easier. So we took our approach towards uh, thinking about how we can orient the cage. And we thought of our uh, reaction bar from last year um, on a robot where it would react with the center stage of uh, Pegasus and be able to hold itself up. So we thought we can uh, use basic torque um, and physics to understand that the cage would be locked in between these two bars, excuse me. And so these two bars are at this certain distance to uh, go under. It'll push the cage into this uh, area and it'll be funneled in through these funnel plates here made of Lexan. And then we'll start going back up and we'll pull the cage with us, locking it into these wheels and therefore lifting us off the ground. And a great part of this is we have been able to orient this to function with our ramp as the issue with bringing our cage into the robot is this ramp would have been in the way. So, so what we do is we have a passive mechanism that will, when we drop the climber, the ramp will drop as well, allowing us to climb with the cage. 
And we really wanted to do this because uh, at 573, we feel that passive mechanisms are very important for keeping our robot simple and uh, keeping uh, operating it and operating on it after a match also simple. Have you noticed this type of climb maybe gives you a little more versatility versus some of the other climbers we've seen out there? Like you get a little more uh, kind of tolerance on how you climb that sort of thing? I would definitely say that uh, we have a lot more um, leniency when climbing as we can push the climber in any way we want. And these funnel plates, as mentioned before, will keep the, uh, the uh, cage in, in the square position we want it to be. One more thing I'd like to add is um, something else we uh, do a lot here at 573 is we take pride in our 3D printed parts. And down here in our climbing mechanism, we've implemented a servo that will activate this 3D printed pawl that'll lock into these motors, keeping us suspended from the ground without the cage actually falling. Overall, this is a great package robot so far, so congratulations on putting it all together. But we got to talk on the uh, software side of things as well, too. So, Maddie, walk me through a bit more how your auto alignment's working. Anything else you want to add in from that perspective? Yeah, so um, our auto alignment is a big part of our robot this year. It's probably the best that it's been since I've been on the team. We can essentially, anywhere that there's an April tag on the field, we auto align there. So whether that's like at the barge to help us auto align for um, climbing on the cage um, with a deep climb, or especially at the reef. So our autonomous modes rely heavily on the April tags, but also our driver and operator use it a lot during the match. Um, as long as our cameras can see an April tag, the robot will start moving towards it and then start angling itself towards the reef to get in the exact position it needs to be. And with that also comes our set points. So we have set points for every level so that our operator um, doesn't have to do as much manual control and only selects where we want to score. And then the robot will articulate itself to be in the exact position it needs to be for that level and it works the same way with our algae system so if we need to displace algae from the reef or collect algae to score in the processor we use auto alignment and set points in order to go into the exact position we need with little room for error so that our driver and operator don't have to focus as much on the small movements that it takes to get in the exact position to score coral on the reef. Like I said, overall, it's a very complete robot here. So, Mech Warriors, congratulations on the great machine so far. Thank we can't you. wait to see how you do here at Kettering One. So, best of luck to you. Thank and you. And thanks for giving us an overview of this machine and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Osh Cut is a premier metal cutting service for first teams. No minimum order, options for same day turnaround, guaranteed lead times and instant online quotes. Osh Cut is offering first teams 50% off any future order up to $200 when you scan the QR code or go to funroboticsnetwork.com slash OSHCUT. Just upload a 3D model or flat pattern to get started.